what is going on you guys and welcome back to another video on the channel if it is your first time here my name is brandon we post weekly videos on the stock market on this channel so if it is your first time here i just think i just said that hit that subscribe button and you can learn more about our investing academy if you're a beginner and you want to learn more about becoming a student click that first link down in the description below. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some of the top things that a beginner should know when it comes to ETF investing. We'll talk about what that means in a second, as well as index investing. And I know those terms can get thrown around uh, kind of interchangeably. We'll talk about the difference between the two as we get a little bit deeper into the video. But ETF investing, index investing is one of the most popular strategies in the investment space, it's really, really trending up, especially as more people are taking on the do-it-yourself approach using something like Quest Trade or Wealth Simple. Um, these ETF products are an outstanding option when it comes to building your portfolio because of how simple they are, because of the diversification they provide you, and they really allow you to invest kind of with a passive hands-off approach. You really don't have to get too involved which is just really a couple of the major reasons why they're growing in popularity. But I guess we'll get started. I mean, we'll dive on into this video and really try to cover off a ton of things here in a, a short amount of in a short amount of time. I guess just starting with the very basics. What does an ETF stand for? And an ETF stands for an exchange traded fund. A ETF is a fund that trades on an exchange, an exchange traded fund. And I guess we can take a step back here a second. Again, this is for anybody that is actually very new to the stock market and really exploring their options. When we traditionally think of investing, we will commonly think to going out and selecting, hand selecting a number of stocks, going out and buying uh, Apple stock or Microsoft or Disney stock individually. That's kind of what you think about when it comes to picking stocks. Now, for a lot of people, that process of stock selection and doing the research there, it may be a bit overwhelming. It could be a little bit scary to go out and pick stocks amongst the thousands of options out there. And this is where ETFs come into play because an ETF is an alternative to picking stocks. And what it is, is essentially a bundle of stocks. So rather than going out and picking one at a time, like the traditional way that we think about investing, an ETF is like a packaged bundle containing a ton of different investments. And really uh, my favorite way to look at this, this is kind of how I was taught growing up and it still to this day is my favorite way to have imagine an ETF is to think of an ETF like a basket. And in that basket, there can be a hundred, there could be a thousand, there could be a ton of different investments or assets all within this basket. So again, rather than going out and picking one stock at a time, which may be very difficult, just buy a basket, which contains a bunch of these stocks. So a single fund could contain, you know, the Microsofts, the Apples, the McDonald's of the world. There are so many different funds to choose from, but right off the bat, when envisioning it in the form of a basket, you can immediately see that that's a great option in terms of diversifying. And by that, we mean spreading our eggs. And if we have a hundred grand to invest, you know, don't just put it in one stock, spread it amongst a ton of stocks even though it's all within one fund. And as well, uh, another major benefit uh, to using ETFs is you can use them tactically to get some pretty good exposure to different areas. Take, for example, you wanna go out and invest in some international companies, right? If you're based here in Canada, but you wanna uh, add some you know, international exposure to your portfolio, say China, say Europe, but you're not sure which companies in particular to pick, well, there are many ETFs that will just give you, you know, broad exposure to the Chinese market or to the European market, or even a mixture of both. And that doesn't just go for international stocks. You can find ETFs on healthcare. If you want to invest in the healthcare sector, gold, technology, energy, there are really a ton, a ton of different options out there. And your job as the investor is to select, well, what ETF do I want to invest in? That's going to suit my uh, circumstance, circ fit well within my fit well within my own portfolio. Now, at this point, you may be thinking to yourself, well, where does the term index fund come into play? Because if you've done any research into the investment space, you'll very commonly hear ETFs and index funds in a similar sentence. In fact, for me personally, I just consider them the same thing. I call ETFs index funds, index funds ETFs. And I know there's someone out there right now saying, well, that's not technically true. They're not the same thing. And you're right, an index fund what that means, as the name kind of implies, is it's simply a fund that tracks an index, 
We'll get to this in a second. Now that can be in the form of an ETF. It could also be in the form of a mutual fund, right? You could have mutual fund index funds. You could have ETF, so exchange traded index funds, depending on how they're structured. You would typically come across uh, the ETFs. That would be more used. It'd be more common for the do-it-yourself investing approach. So let's say you open up a Quest Trade account and you're managing your own portfolio. ETF index funds would be the common route there. Meanwhile, if you went to the bank, like if you worked with an advisor at the bank, you can still invest in index funds, but it would be through the form of a mutual fund. And that is where there'd be an advisor link to that. And they'd be essentially managing the fund for you. Slightly higher fees on those, but that's a video. That's a topic for another video. And regardless of the structure, an index fund, and I'm just going to, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to call it an ETF because that's the way that I like to view it. An ETF, an index fund, what that does is it simply tracks or mirrors an index. That's why I guess the name index funds. And we can think to a couple of very common indexes. You may be wondering like, what is an index? You may have heard of things like the S&P 500 index, uh, the TSX composite index, the Russell 2000. There's a ton of different indexes in the investing world. And again, to take it a step back and give, I guess a little analogy here, you could think of an index kind of like a catalog. So if you went, into your local Nike store, you see shoes, you see, you know, t-shirts and sweaters and headbands. There's all sorts of products within the store. And then you have the catalog and the catalog is kind of just a way of uh, showcasing or, or, you know, showing the different products in the store. It's like a compilation of all the products. That to me is a really good analogy of what an index is like. So the S and P 500 index is basically a list of the 500 largest companies in America. Now, conversely, we can look at the TSX index, which is just another listing, another grouping of stocks. But this one is, of course, tracking our Canadian market for the Toronto Stock Exchange Index. That's what the TSX composite stands for. Now, technically, as an investor, you can't go out. You cannot go out and just buy an index. You can't go out and actually buy the TSX. You can't go out and actually buy the S&P 500 itself because, again, those are just like groupings of stocks. But what you can do is buy a fund that tracks these indexes. Again, this is what an index fund is. So this is why if you actually look, I mean, to take a look at a couple examples, you'll see that an index fund, what it holds within that fund, again, with the assets that are comprised within that single fund, they will be an exact replication of the fund that they're tracking. And that's where you'll see here the benchmark or the index. It, if it's an S&P 500 fund, well, it's gonna be tracking the companies within the S&P 500. And this is of course where the different providers come into play. So you may have heard of names like Vanguard, one of the big fund providers, iShares, uh, BMO, there are so many, so many options. They all offer their own selection of funds, their own selection of ETFs. And at the end of the day, you know, they're all trying to attract your money. Vanguard wants you to use their fund. Fidelity wants you to use their fund. BMO wants you to use their fund, but they all kind of have comparable products. Uh, they're all going to have their S&P 500 fund, their US like tracking fund. They're all going to have their Canadian fund. They're very, very much comparable. And ultimately your job as the investor is to find out which provider you like the most, which one charges the best fees and whatnot. Um, to go find the product, the fund that suits your portfolio the best. And just a fun tip here, a quick tip for anybody that is taking the do-it-yourself approach and planning on using ETFs. When it comes to selecting your provider, if you're really stressing out and you're really, really confused about which one to go with, I'll be completely honest with you guys, you can likely just go with your favorite one. And I mean, take that with a grain of salt. I'm not saying go out and pick any ETF out there, but if you're comparing two S&P 500 ETFs, like a Vanguard option and an iShares option, and I get a lot of questions saying, well, which one should I go with? They're both gonna be investing in the same thing. If they're both tracking the S&P 500, the underlying holdings in the fund are gonna be identical because that's what they're setting out to do. So don't really sit at home and stress for hours and hours over this one's incremental fees, this or that. To me, that's, worth, that's not worth stressing over. Instead, go with your favorite provider, assuming it's a, a, a good fund, a credible fund and a credible provider, and focus your energy somewhere else as a beginner. Focus your energy on learning the fundamentals and strategy and, and mindset. That to me is so much more important than nitpicking over, you know, which one's got the higher MER, this, the, this and that. And I guess that'll lead almost into our next point here. 
which is regarding uh, MERs, fees, because ETFs do come at a cost. They're not free to use. Again, let's backtrack. You always have the option of going out and picking individual stocks yourself. But if you want to invest in a package deal, if you want to go out and buy a bundle of stocks, which is what these providers offer for you, if you're going to use their product, they do charge a little fee. It's called the MER, the Management Expense Ratio. And with an ETF, we are looking at often some very, very low fees. Uh, they're a very, very cost affordable. They're a very, very uh, cheap way to invest, at least relative to mutual funds. The average mutual fund fee, just FYI, would probably run at about 2 to 2.5%. That's really the standard that I like to say, if you're going to go to the bank, you're going to go out and buy, uh, utilize a mutual fund, which is what they'll provide you with uh, if you go to Royal Bank, TD Bank, etc., a 2.5% MER. With an ETF, you're often looking at MERs around 0.05%, maybe 0.10%, uh, 0.1%. Sometimes you'll see them up creeping up to, you know, a quarter percentage point, um, you know, 50 basis points. It really does depend on the complexity of the fund. Um, obviously, if you're investing in like a broad based Canadian fund, which is a pretty simple fund, an index to track, you're going to look at a very, very low fee. As you get more and more unique with the index funds or with the ETFs, say you're looking at a video game uh, ETF, one that tracks, you know, esports and video games, or, you know, there's a ton of options out there. None are coming to my head right now. As you climb up the complexity ladder, you can expect to pay more and more fees, but relative to a mutual fund, you're still looking at a much, much lower cost. So let's assume that a fund had a 0.05% MER. That means that for every $100 you invest, they're going to take off. And when I say they, it's the provider of the fund that you're using. They will automatically take off, in this case, five cents for every hundred dollars you have invested. Obviously, this scales up if you're investing more money, but that's the fee that they charge you to utilize an ETF, which at the end of the day, for many people to get a diversified portfolio, to kind of take a step back and not have to worry about the uh, individual management of each stock, often a fee that's uh, well worth paying. Important tip here, and this is a question that I do tend to get a lot, and let's just uh, get it out there. The price of the ETF does not matter, does not matter. And people will constantly ask me, well, you know, the, the Vanguard fund, Brandon, is $20 per share, and the iShares fund is $60 per share. Again, uh, assuming we're talking here about the same type of fund, right? Tracking the same index. Why is this one so much cheaper? Why is this one so much better? The price is irrelevant when it comes to investing in ETFs. In fact, in many cases, the price is really irrelevant when it comes to the stock market. As an investor, we want to be thinking in terms of percentages. And a way that I can explain this through a quick example is, you know, imagine you had two pies and both of these pies are worth $100 each. And, you know, if one of the pies was cut into 10 slices at $10 a piece, like 10 slices of $10, and the other one was cut into 20 slices at $5 each, it's still the same amount of pie. It just depends on how they decided to slice it up. So if you're going to go out and buy, you know, a quarter of this pie, let's assume you want to take a $25 and buy a quarter. In one case, you'll be holding more slices. In one case, you'll be holding bigger slices it's still the same amount of pie at the end of the day. It's still $25 worth. So when it comes to selecting ETFs, if you are comparing apples to apples in terms of the same fund, just keep that in the back of your mind. The price does not matter. Distributions, another thing to talk about when it comes to ETFs or funds for that matter. And by investing in a fund or by investing in an ETF, you can actually earn passive income along with the share, uh, the price of this fund, the price of this basket going up, you can absolutely earn some income along the way through the form of a distribution. So let's keep in mind that within a, an ETF or within a fund, if there's 100 stocks in that fund, a lot of those stocks will pay dividends, a dividend being just a little cash payment that some companies pay. Now, do those dividends go straight through to you? Um, how does that work? Do you get a fraction of the dividend? All really good thoughts. How a fund works is they essentially compile up, they gather and they gather all the dividends that are being paid with the assets within the fund, and then they pay out what's called a distribution. So you can think of this very similarly to a dividend, and by going online, which FYI, if you wanna to go to a provider's website, you can look at their ETFs, you can look at all that stuff, 
There's usually a tab for dividends and distributions. You can usually see uh, in terms of a percentage form, uh, per you can see in the form of a percentage, how much money you can expect to make through distributions through passive income from simply holding a specific fund. Now, in wrapping up today's video, we will finish things off with a quick FAQ, some frequently asked questions. These are some questions that come to mind. Uh, I've come across these in the comment section from you guys. Uh, maybe they're a question that you yourself are just still thinking in the back of your head and that we haven't touched on yet. But um, question number one, are ETFs risky? A very, very common question. And I don't think it's fair to say that they're risky, that they're safe. Uh, you can get ETFs that are risky. You can get ETFs that are safe. It totally depends on what type of fund you're going for. One thing that they do a great job of is diversifying your assets. So if you look at it in the sense of you have $100,000 to invest and you can go out and buy one single stock or you can go out and buy one single ETF and um, you're comparing those options, well, yeah, this is a safer option in the sense that you are spreading your eggs amongst multiple different investments, hundreds, thousands of investments versus taking on the equity, like putting all your money into one single stock. But are they safe or risky in terms of going up and down in terms of volatility? They'd be no different than a stock because again, this is just an alternate. Uh, it's just an alternative to investing in stocks. It's rather than going out and picking them individually, you're going to invest in them through a bundle, through a package. So ETFs are volatile just as much as stocks. Uh, they'll go up like a stock, they'll go down like a stock. During tough times, it's possible to see pretty severe drops. They'd also participate during uh, good periods of growth. It totally, totally depends on the particular fund that you're picking and what index it's tracking if you wanna ask the question whether it's risky or not. Second question, actually my only other question for the FAQ, what are the downsides to ETFs? Are there any downsides to ETFs? Because for the most part, they sound probably like a pretty good option so far. One of the major downsides to me, and this is really the major downside, with an index fund, you really don't have any flexibility. There's really, there's no flexibility in terms of what's going on within the fund. You don't have any control as the investor to trim back from positions, to overweight, to underweight stocks within the ETF. Again, if there's a fund that's tracking an index, that's all it's gonna do. And if the index, if certain components are going up, certain components are going down, the ETF or the index fund is gonna be doing exactly the same. And that can be a good thing in the fact that you don't really have to do anything and you just let it be. But at the same token, sometimes as an investor, you do wanna trim back from positions that are doing well and that are making up bigger parts of the index. Uh, sometimes you may wanna actually um, reinvest and actually deploy money into an underweight, an underperforming area in an in a index. Uh, that's kind of the way that I actually like to approach it. And with the ETF, again, you have absolutely no flexibility. It's a very, very passive investment, a very, very hands-off investment, which is just simply gonna mirror it. That's just one of the, uh, I guess, the risks, uh, one of just the downsides, I believe, to investing with ETFs. Maybe not the biggest deal for you, but I actually did a pretty interesting video on the S&P 500 uh, about a year or so ago, a little while back, but it's still very relevant. If you do wanna check that out, I'll actually go ahead and link that for you just talking about the ratio of how much certain companies represent in an index. Uh, pretty eye-opening to realize where your money's deployed when you invest in certain index funds that are skewed in certain ways. But that'll wrap it up for today's video. At the end of the day, I absolutely love index investing. I think it really is the best approach for a beginner that's looking to get started. In fact, it's actually one of the ways that I promote and I teach uh, taking our investing academy start with index funds, start with ETFs. And if you want to pair that up with dividend stocks, you want to start building a portfolio of individual stocks, you can absolutely do that. But at least know that the core of your portfolio, at least know that when you're starting and actually building up a portfolio, you're diversified, you're getting good exposure to a ton of different areas. Um, and again, you're doing it all at a very, very low cost. So at the end of the day, nothing bad to say about index funds for the most part. I'm not saying that it is the right option for you, but at least now hopefully you have some insight into how they work and how they can be applied into a portfolio. Always be sure to do your own research and your own due diligence on which are the right products for you that fit well with your lifestyle, with your investing style, with your circumstances. Uh, this is just a video to help shed some light on a very popular and very growing trend in index and ETF investing. If you enjoyed 
feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Um, smash the thumbs up button because that's a great way of supporting the channel. You can subscribe for more content because we post videos like this, uh, weekly videos on the stock market every week. And like I said, you can also learn more about our investing academy. If you are a beginner to the stock market, we're working with Canadians every day. Uh, teaching them, helping them set up their accounts, showing them how to use and navigate. Uh, Quest Trade is the platform that we use. You can learn about that in the description below. Um, down in the description below, there will also be a pinned comment. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next.